Let's take a look at some basic sketching techniques inside of Corel Painter 12. So when I'm doing sketches, uh, the tool I like to use is the Detail Oils Brush. And any thin diameter brush will work. You want something that builds up kind of slowly so it acts more like a pencil. Uh, something kind of like this, rather than something that's too thick, like that. Um, I generally make my sketches on a new layer and you can name your sketch if you want and I tend to use a kind of dark gray color for my sketches rather than black because again I want I want to be able to sketch um, but I want to be able to build up my sketch I think it helps um, when you're sketching if you can do some light strokes and then kind of gradually darken them by going over the same spot it helps you kind of build up the shape you want a lot easier because some of these lines you're drawing you can kind of um, go over or ignore them you can see I've kinda I'm kinda roughing it in and then going through and really just getting it to be the shape that I want exactly and if you try to do this with a brush or a pencil that builds up too fast um, you're gonna have a heck of a time doing it. So it's a, you know, not the world's most most perfect circle doing it that way. Uh, that that's one way to sketch out a shape. Um, it de also kind of depends on what size tablet you have. If you have one of these little tiny uh, bamboos or something, one of these really small ones that's like the size of an envelope, then you can't really move your hand around much. But I have a pretty big tablet. I have a nine by twelve, so I can also um, do some larger gesture drawing like this so I can get better circles. So when I'm drawing, I'm not using I'm not using my wrist um, when I'm drawing. If I have my pen here, you could be drawing with your wrist, um, and sometimes that works for drawing tight circles. But if you want to be uh, drawing big gestures and ultimately straighter lines and better looking circles you'll want to draw with your elbow so my elbow here is what's rotating when I'm drawing if that makes any sense so when I'm drawing I'm using big gestures and I'm trying to think about drawing with my elbow rather than my wrist when I'm drawing with my wrist my bottom of my hand is is kind of planted here where my wrist bone is and then I'm essentially just kind of pivoting my hand so that it kind of locks, uh, it constrains your pencil to a certain angle. And that allows you to draw some pretty good curves and things too. Sometimes I pick my hand up, it depends. I'm also um, kind of holding my pen down with my fingertips. So I'm holding it, this is a kind of a crude drawing, but it's my thumbnail and so I'm holding my pen kind of near the end um, like, you, like you would with a writing pencil and then that way it hovers above the tablet just a little bit you know it's maybe um, when I'm hovering above it it's you know maybe like a quarter of an inch or like half an inch or something that way when you're hovering over your tablet you know you can see your cursor move and then when you press down you can draw um, sometimes though when I'm when I'm painting, I will use my pen more like a brush and kind of hold it differently, but generally for sketching, you want to hold it like you would a pencil. So you can see I've been doing some sketching while I've been talking about this. Um, sketching is essentially the skeleton for the drawing or the painting that you're going to make. So it's kind of the blueprint or the framework, you know, it's, you're doing a drawing but it's not a drawing that you're going to keep. It's just something that's going to function as a guide so that you can do a better drawing over that. Um, you'll have to get used to building things with primitive shapes if you haven't done sketching before. I think most people when they think about drawing, if you were going to draw a cat, they'd just start going along and drawing linearly like this and then go, okay, here's a cat you know, whatever, and it's going to look probably not much like a cat. But that's not a good way to draw because 
your mind is trying to think of the whole outline of the of the animal um it's not really it's just a little too confusing it's all too much to think about at once so if you draw with primitive shapes and you build up your shape that way then you can go okay here's my cat's head here's where the body will be uh here's where the legs will attach here's part of one leg you know and then here's the other leg and so on then it makes it easier to build up your cat incrementally and decide you know how it's going to look ultimately so same goes for people too um, when i'm drawing people start with a circle or a sphere for the head and then the neck is kind of just a cylinder the torso is also kind of a cylinder the shoulders are spherical the arms are again cylinders and now knowing where the proportions of all these things are is uh, can be a little tricky that's just something you'll have to study uh, I'll go into human anatomy in another video but not this one you can see I'm just kind of blocking things in for the most part with primitive shapes and I'm not going to worry about everything looking perfect yet because I know I can go back over this and refine it if I need to again more cylinders for the arms the hands you know I guess are kind of cylinders or some some you know other shape and then there's a lot of cylinders that make up your fingers and you could even just use lines too when you're sketching you don't always have to uh, use primitive shapes either I mean it kinda comes down to whatever works for you but as you can see I'm using these primitive shapes to sketch out my form however I want it and if you needed to adjust something you know you can always change your sketch you can make your head bigger smaller you can adjust your jaw line on your head and it's all kinds of different things you can do so then when you've got a sketch you can also make more sketches on top of that if you wanted to and refine your sketch you got your rough sketch then you could zoom in and you could make a more refined sketch where you're more accurate about what you were drawing Now I'm kind of being quick and sloppy about this. I don't usually draw so fast and rough, but you know I want to get through this pretty quick so that you can see more of the technique and less of me just drawing. But as you can see, you can then refine your sketch into another sketch, and then when you're done sketching, you could you know go ahead and paint over that however you want. So again, it's kind of like it's kind of like the blueprint or the skeleton of your drawing. Uh, the reason why you do this is because it saves you time down the road. Um, if you plot out everything in your sketch, then you know exactly where everything is going to be placed, and you're not guessing. And then that way, your artwork's going to come out more like you intended it to. So anyhow, you can see that I'm following what I have more or less but I'm changing it a little bit in some places where I think it's appropriate so I'm not you know again it's it's just a framework you can build around it and you can build off of it and you can get something that you like better so now there's a refined sketch now I could make another sketch off of that and refine it even more if I wanted to or I could just start painting if I'm pretty satisfied with the character that I have here so to get into primitive shapes, if you're wondering what I mean by that, if you've never heard that term, your primitive shapes are your uh, sphere, and you got your cone, and you got your cube. Everybody knows the cube. And we've got the cylinder, and there's a lesser known torus and so with these uh, primitive shapes you can build uh, any other shape so pretty much anything you can draw is going to be combinations of these shapes in one way or another 
so for instance, uh, car is essentially just starting out as a cube, and then it's got you know more cubes on top of it, and then it's got some toruses for the wheels, and you know there's the headlights which are spheres, and you know you could go on forever. Um, any, again, anything you can think of is going to be one of these primitive shapes. So when you're drawing whatever you want to draw, if it's a person's head, you know, you sketch in these things first with your primitive shapes. Maybe they're wearing a hat. Maybe their hats, you know, maybe that's a primitive shape. Their body, just a big torso, and then they got some feet and. You know, this is a crude drawing, but nevertheless, it gives you an idea of, of how um, easy it is to sketch things once you stop thinking of them as just an outline of something. Because, you know, I'm sure everybody's kind of done that. When they, when they think about drawing or they've done drawing, they just think about it as the outline. And they, go, they start at point A and they go to point B, and then they end up there. Well, that's not the best way to go, you know. You should should be sketching things out and then they come out more accurately. So when you're sketching people, again, you, know, you use primitive shapes. There's some techniques you can do to use lines for your sketches. You can imagine this line as being a person's spine. So if I change this in different ways, then when I make my body follow this shape, you'll see that between these two examples, uh, these people have entirely different movement about them based on uh, what it is that I do to these lines, or how I or how I draw these lines initially. Neck is looking a little long here. Fix that. And you can see with the arms, you know, you could just indicate them with lines. This person looks like they're leaning forward, you know, you can tell that you kind of have to balance them out now and put their leg right there and they could be, you know, kind of taking a step forward or something like this. So, that's how easy it is to sketch. And, you know, this is rough, it's not perfect, and again, I always go through and uh, refine everything a little bit after I've done my sketch and again I could show you how I would do that in this case turn down the opacity and then you could go through and you know, actually draw this in a little less sloppy and you could have uh, you know a better sketch of a person using this basic sketch as a guide. Now, of course, I see here I've uh, perhaps made the arms too long, so or they're not quite the length that they should be. So that's a, an opportunity to refine my sketch a little bit, and then make an arm that I think looks more appropriate. So anyways, you can see I can get a more refined shape. Now, I just do my sketches pretty rough because I know that I'm not going to keep them. I just need to know, I just need to use them enough to know where everything's going to be laid out. And then other than that, you know, I don't, even if this person's face was going to be really, really detailed and they were going to have eyelashes and a beard and eyebrows and all that stuff, I'm not going to draw that stuff in unless I need to know it's there ahead of time, otherwise I'll just put that stuff in later. So the sketch only needs to be uh, just enough for you to be able to start the painting and nothing more. If you're doing uh, landscapes, sketching can be really helpful to determine uh, perspective. If you're doing perspective drawing, you know, if you want things to look a little more realistic and you can do that by defining where your horizon line is and then you can make a perspective point. Let's say that's here. From that perspective point, then 
you could draw guides holding shift. Sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, let's get it here. One of these days. There we go. So holding shift after about 50 tries will eventually constrain your uh, drawing to a, either a horizontal or vertical axis. And then sometimes if you're lucky it'll do diagonal also. There we go. So I have some rough guides that I could use here to de determine where my perspective is. And now when I sketch on a layer above that, let's say that I'm going to be uh, illustrating a car going down the middle of a road. Now this is like probably the easiest possible example of perspective drawing. And you've probably done this in like kindergarten or something with train tracks, but there you go. This is our road. I'll make some indications of little road strips and we could have a car a really sloppy sloppily drawn car of course you can tell I'm not much of a <laughs> car illustrator here but whatever got your pig mobile whatever this thing is it's kinda what it looks like now and it's got a curly Q tail and it's Zooming down the road here, going who knows where. So, and you could even put in, uh, you know, some really sloppy trees if you wanted to. And again, this isn't uh, a tutorial on realistic drawing. Obviously, this is you know just for sketching. So, this is how sketches should be. They should just be rough ideas just enough to know whether you want to pursue an idea or not you know and I could take this sketch and as sloppy as it looks turn this into a really realistic beautiful painting um, and really flesh out this pigmobile no pun intended and uh, you know it would look really cool you could do the same thing with your clouds your clouds could be you know following your perspective off into the distance you could have multiple perspectives too. You could have a perspective coming from over here. You don't have to hold shift if you're really good about drawing kind of straight lines. You know, you could have some stuff like a, a path that comes out this way or something. I don't know. But that just kind of gives you an idea of some things you can do when you're sketching. So hopefully that's uh, helpful and you can use that when you're creating your own digital artwork. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.